Hi, Mrs. KJ here, going over 6.02, Activated, Complex. Have your notes ready. Molecules, or atoms, are blank moving. So how would you fill that in? Molecules, atoms, are always moving. So all molecules are moving all the time. The only time molecules would stop moving is if we get to absolute zero, which would be zero Kelvin, or approximately negative 458 degrees Fahrenheit. So insanely crazy cold. And no, we have never had that happen. Scientists are trying. We've talked about that in a previous lesson. So as far as we're concerned, all molecules in the entire universe are always moving. So how do chemical reactions happen? Well, it might feel like you just kind of jump topics, but the fact that molecules are moving is going to be why and how chemical reactions happen. So molecules need to collide in order to react. But not only do they need to bump into each other and collide, but they need to collide in the right orientation. So by orientation, we mean the correct place they need to collide and at the correct angle. So let's look at an example. Collision theory. Molecules in a chemical reaction collide, but they won't react unless they're properly aligned. So they need to be in the right orientation. They need to be the right angle, the right place. So we're going to move this HCl molecule into position to react. So here we have HCl. Which one do you think is the H? The large green one or the little gray one? Well, it's a little gray one because hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table. So since it's number one, how many protons does it have? One. So it's really tiny. Chlorine's a lot bigger. So this is HCl. And we're going to have the HCl react with this molecule. This molecule has two carbons and one, two, three, four, what are these? Hydrogens. So. We'll move it there, and they will bump, but as you notice, they got close to each other, but no reaction. All right, what about here? If I line the hydrogens up perfectly, do you think it will react? Is that the correct orientation? Is that the correct place? And nope, it's not, because the hydrogens are both a little bit positive, and so they're going to repel each other. They don't want to react. Plus, they already have a full outer shell. This hydrogen is happy. It's got chlorine. This hydrogen is happy. It's got the carbon there. It has a full outer shell, so it doesn't need to react. Where do you think I need to place this in order to have it react? Well, here, again, I would just have the hydrogens. And this, me this molecule is symmetrical. So putting it straight over here, did that cause it to react? No, nope, it's just not a good place for it because those two hydrogens already have the electrons bound up. So what about here? Here we have a reaction. So if you notice, this had a double bond. So it's sharing one, two, three, four total electrons as a double bond. And when we have them collide, now what do you notice? There's only a single bond. And so because there's a single bond, that carbon is sharing its electron with the hydrogen, and this carbon is sharing its electron with the chlorine, and everybody is happy. So where else could I put this in order to have it react? Where else would be the correct orientation? Well, it would also be right here. Since this molecule is symmetrical, I can attack it from that side. Woohoo! And I get the same result. So sometimes there's more than one place that you can have it react, but in this case, it needs to react at the point of the double bonds so that the double bonds split, become a single bond, and this carbon shares with that hydrogen, this carbon shares with the chlorine. So in your notes, make sure you wrote down how do chemical reactions happen? Number one. Molecules need to collide in the right orientation, so the right place, the right angle, the right alignment. Number two, when molecules collide, they make an activated complex or transition state. So activated complex and transition state mean the same thing. 
an activated complex or transition state means a temporary arrangement of all the chemicals in a reaction that happens between being reactants and products. So make sure you have this all written down. So a chemical reaction, it takes time, and that was reaction rate, which we talked about in a previous lesson. A chemical reaction begins with reactants, they become an activated complex, and then they become the product. So, so far we've just been saying reactants turn into products, and we've been skipping the fact that, well, there's actually a middle step. And that middle step is the activated complex, which is a temporary arrangement of all the chemicals. In other words, they make a big glob. So they start out separately as reactants, they make a big glob, and then they separate and become products. So let's look at an example. We're going to start out with hydroxide. Hydroxide is OH negative, and what does that negative tell us again? It has a negative one charge, which means it gained one electron. So it's an OH with an extra electron. And my other reactant is bromomethane, which is CH3Br. So one carbon, three hydrogens attached to a bromine. And they are going to react. Now again, when reactions collide, they have to have enough energy, so enough speed, and the proper orientation. They don't immediately form products. Instead, the reactants interlock, much like two cars colliding in a demolition derby crash. The interlocked molecules form an immediate species, or in other words, a big blob. <laughs> but immediate species sounds a little better than big blob. And we call that big blob activated complex or the transition state. Then the activated complex breaks apart to form the products. So they come together, they made a transition state, and if you notice, when they came together, the hydrogens kind of scooted out of the way too. So all right, we have our reactants, they come together, and then they break apart and rearrange over to the side where they belong, and now I made methanol, CH3OH, and bromine. So when I had these two combinations, we're basically taking the bromine off and having that become a product, and these guys are going to combine, which is fine. But it's not like this breaks off and swims around and then finds this one. No. No. They have to collide. They become one big glob, and the official name of that glob is the activated complex or transition state. Then they can finish the reaction, they can separate and become the two separate products. So we have bromine, negative one, meaning it has one extra electron, and we have methanol with it, which is CH3OH. Now if you're thinking to yourself, why don't they just write CH4O, because that's what it is. Well, yeah, but when we do organic chemistry, organic, if you remember from like the very first lesson at the beginning of the year, we talked about Organic chemistry is a type of chemistry where you're dealing with carbon, and there are so many possible arrangements that they make the formula in this setup so that you can look at the formula and know how to draw the actual chemical. And of course, now we see why that's so important that we know how to draw it because we have our transition state. And then we need to know where the molecules all go in our final product. So we have CH3, a carbon with three hydrogens, and then we have an OH. And now if you're thinking to yourself, well, how come the OH isn't on the right and the carbon's not on the left? You can spin the molecule around. It doesn't matter. Okay, they flip around in space. It's not like they're just stuck there, remember. They are always moving around. So chemical reactions begin with reactants. They become the activated complex or transition state for just a split second in the middle. Then they can finish reacting and separate if they need to and become the products. So how do chemical reactions happen? Number one, molecules need to collide in the right orientation, the right place and angle. When molecules collide, they make an activated complex or transition state or like that middle glob where all the chemicals are together in a big mess in between being reactants and products. And the third thing is when molecules collide, they need to be moving fast enough to make the products. So they need to have enough energy to react. That's crazy important, because if there's not enough energy, they just kind of 
bump into each other and nothing happens. They need the energy to actually perform the activated complex or transition state and then become products. And the easiest way to show this is to look at a graph. So let's take a look at this graph. We have time. So this is over time. This is what's happening. Over time, reactants are becoming the transition state or activated complex, and then they're becoming the product. Here we have the pictures. We have the reactants. The OH is separated. The transition state or activated complex. We have the one big mess of everything together, and then they separate into the products, the CH3OH and the BR negative. All right, so now let's take a look at this red line here, and let's take a look at our y-axis. This is our energy. So our reactants have this much energy. They're just kind of dancing along, do, 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 moving all over the place, and they need to have this much energy. They need to have an increase in energy in order to form the transition state. So if they're just bumping into each other and they're not going fast enough, nothing's going to happen. So what can we do to make them go faster? We can stir it or we can increase the temperature. There's other ways too, but those are two of the ways we've talked about so far. And so now we have enough energy and boom, I have this transition state. And then look, it becomes the products. And this nice little boom. If we look over here, we see that we have a lot less energy. Okay, so now these products are moving even slower than before. So if we start out with a certain amount of energy and we end up with less energy, did energy go out or did energy come in? Well, energy, if we just look from the beginning to the end, because we did have to have some extra energy here, but if we just look at the beginning to the end, our products have less energy than our reactants. So if our products have less energy and energy went out, what vocab word am I trying to get you to think of? Exothermic. So this is what happens during an exothermic reaction. The reactants have a certain amount of energy. We need some extra energy to have the transition state or activated complex form. And then the energy is going out as the bonds are breaking and rearranging. And that's how you get your products. Now, this amount of extra energy from here to here, that, of course, has a vocab word, and it's called the activation energy, the energy you need to activate. So that one's kind of an easy one to remember. So activate the transition state, boom, and then it can finish up its reaction. So that was the, the first one I showed you was just an overall. And so we, if we wanted to, we could put on some numbers. So we have 60J at the top. What does J stand for? Joules. So how much energy approximately did our reactants start out with? They started with a little bit more than 30 joules of energy. And how much total energy did they need in order to react? In order to form the transition state, well, we have to go from here over to here, and we would say about 50, right? About 50 joules in order to react. So they started at 30, they went to 50, so how much is my activation energy? They needed an extra 20 joules. So 50 minus 30. I started at 30. I needed 20 more joules to get to 50 in order to react. And now I could say, well, when I'm all done with this exothermic reaction, I know that some energy went out. And if some energy went out, I have approximately how much energy in my products? It's not letting me draw my line straight, sorry guys, but you can see it's approximately 10. So there's approximately 10. So I went from 30 and I went down to 10 from reactants to products, but it's important to remember that we have this activation energy in there too, which is the extra energy that we need to form the transition state. So those are the three biggest things that we need to have happen in order to have chemical reactions. All right, go ahead and do the pre-quiz. And then when you're ready, check your answers. If you have questions, come see me and then take your quiz.